Hi, my name is Chris Cavillio from sportsrehab.com.au. I'm the creator of the Sports Rehab Tourniquet, which is a great training tool for the use in blood flow restriction training. I get a lot of people ask me as to the mechanisms as to why BFR works and how you can actually incorporate it into your own training environment. Therefore, I thought I'd put a short little video together explaining the mechanisms as to how it works. As most of literature states, you can actually get gains in muscle cross-sectional area or hypertrophy and strength levels using loads as low as 20% of 1RM. As we traditionally know, you have to use high loads or loads greater than 70% of 1RM to elicit the stress on the muscle to create the anabolic environment to create changes in strength, power and size. So it's important to understand that we need to stress the muscle. And as we realize using really low loads of 20% of 1RM, we just don't have the external load or the mechanical stress put onto the muscle to elicit the appropriate change. This is where BFR works really well. And what happens here is there's actually an increase in metabolic stress. And the combination of the metabolic stress with the very small mechanical load has been known to create the anabolic signaling that you need to create changes within the muscle. And these changes are obviously associated with size, strength, power, speed, and other performance indicators. So the principle behind blood flow restriction is to restrict the venous return of blood from your muscles. This essentially means that you're allowing blood to flow freely into the muscle, but you are partially restricting it coming back out. Consequently, due to the restriction of blood flow, this creates a hypoxic environment and the consequential increase in metabolic stress. When you look at the mechanisms behind why it works, there's five main ones that literature talks about. The first one is the concentration of metabolites. And these metabolites include an increase in hydrogen ions, inorganic phosphate, and a decrease in the pH environment. You don't really have to worry about understanding what these metabolites exactly do. But what is good to know is that it creates the environment for an anabolic response. And one of these responses is a positive hormonal response. As I said earlier, a decrease in the pH environment actually helps to stimulate growth hormone, which we know is associated with increases in muscle size and strength. As a consequence with an increase in growth hormone concentrations, there's actually a delayed increase in insulin growth factor one, which is another hormone associated with an anabolic response. Testosterone concentrations also increase as a result of BFR use. And this is another fantastic marker related to improvements in strength, speed, and power. The third mechanism is intramuscular signaling. And this refers to the stimulation of these signaling pathways independent of the hormones and growth factors, which moderate adaptive responses in the muscles. For those who are interested, increases in mTOR, S6K1 signaling, and reactive oxygen species have been shown to increase with BFR use. The fourth mechanism is intracellular swelling, otherwise known as the pump. Take, for example, someone who has a knee injury. Typically without BFR, they would do their rehab exercises and really struggle to get the activation or the feel within their quadricep. I definitely know from use of BFR, using small range of movement and a simple three by 10 body weight type rep protocol, that they can actually get the feeling of the pump or the swelling within the muscle. And they really report positive feelings of the joint and everything being supported. To further explain the intracellular swelling, what happens is it is an increased pressure which may be perceived to threaten the cellular integrity, causing the cell to initiate a signaling response to reinforce its ultra structure. In other words, this phenomenon essentially stimulates another significant anabolic signaling pathway. The fifth mechanism is muscle fiber recruitment. The hypoxic environment causes the low threshold type 1 fibers to fatigue a lot earlier and therefore the more glycolytic or the type 2 fibers are recruited a lot quicker. Traditionally we need high loads to recruit type 2 fibers 
So research has actually shown that type 1 fibres can be innovated by using BFR, using low loads. Therefore, this is a really great tool for strength, speed, power athletes who need to try and maintain their type 2 fibres while in a rehab type setting. So those are the five basic mechanisms as to why BFR works and the responses that it creates within the muscles to help elicit the improvements in strength, power and speed. I'd like to now talk about a few important considerations around BFR use. The first one is pressures. Remembering that we're trying to create partial occlusion of blood flow. When you look into research, they talk about creating 50 to 80% of arterial occlusion. I tend to subscribe on the lower side of arterial occlusion and hence set my pressures around 50%. When you look into a well-accomplished researcher, Jeremy Lonicky, who has done so much research in this area, he actually spoke about the role of limb circumference and blood pressures of the relevant limbs as important factors for considerations. I've taken his research and created an easy to use equation on my website so that you can do it yourself with a tape measure and an automatic blood pressure cuff. Therefore, I'm able to produce a much more relevant blood pressure for the user. The second point is around cuff width, where thinner cuffs require a greater total pressure to create the same amount of arterial occlusion. As using a wider cuff, you're able to disperse the total pressure over a greater area. Therefore, in my opinion, if I can use a slightly wider cuff, I'm able to train at a lower pressure, creating the same percentage of arterial occlusion, therefore making it much safer for the user. My lower body cuffs are 10 centimeters wide, and knowing that I'm able to use a slightly lower pressure than using a thinner cuff gives me great relief with the users knowing that I can still get the great response from BFR use without having to use high pressures. I've moved to a slightly thinner cuff with the upper body, and this is more to create a greater range of movement and a variety of exercises that you could use. My cuffs also have a detachable pump, which this really decreases the restrictions and improves the greater range of exercises that you can choose from. The next point is around the rep scheme. At the moment, the 75 rep protocol is quite popular in both literature and also in general public use. This is where the first set is 30 reps, followed by three sets of 15 thereafter. As you can imagine, this would create a large amount of metabolic stress within the muscle. And as I mentioned earlier, the mechanisms behind increasing the metabolic stress has that cascading anabolic response for the muscle. However, it's important to realize once you want to start taking this from the rehab setting into the performance setting, that you need to start adapting your own protocols for use. This is the way I look at it. When we're doing rehab type lifting, the mechanical stress is really low. Therefore, to create the response, we use BFR, which tops up the total amount of stress to create the response in the muscle. However, when we're doing performance lifting, the stress is really high. Therefore, we only need to top up the stress a little tiny bit and this is where the rep scheme and also how you use the cuffs becomes quite important. Therefore, for this example, as I'm moving an athlete into an elite performance lifting type environment, I'll use an intermittent type protocol. This is where in between the sets, I'll decrease the pressure. So the metabolic stress isn't as high for the total set. Also in respect to the reps, I'll start to move them more towards a repetition scheme that is more akin to the type of phase that they're in. I would still lift athletes using threes and twos with really high percentages of RMs, but know that I can actually decrease their percentage RM or load lifted or their mechanical stress and just top it up a little bit with metabolic stress. So this is great for athletes who might be in a contact sport who can only lift once during a week and what you can do by using the cuffs, as I said, you're offloading the joint, but there's other really good responses from BFR use, such as decreases in tendon and joint pain. So once again, if you had a contact sport athlete who might have sore shoulders or sore knees, you can still lift them heavy using say 70 to 80% of RM loadings, decrease the joint or the mechanical stress on the joint, 
and just topping the stress up with the BFR use. Therefore, use of BFR is a balance between the mechanical and the metabolic stress using different percentages of RM loadings and also the reps and set schemes. I hope this was an informative introduction of BFR, the mechanisms as to why it works and some basic considerations behind its use. I've had great personal success and also with the athletes that I work with. As I alluded to, there's a few other uses for BFR than just improvements in muscle strength and size. And these include decreases in joint and tendon pain, a potential use in tendinopathies, but also improvements in bone formation markers. If you want any more information, please visit my website or YouTube channel where I have lots of videos explaining about BFR use. Thanks for listening and keep the pump.